Hi Press On and welcome to your Thursday, June 18th Stronger Together workout. Your workout for today is going to be a 21 minute EMOM. In your first minute, you are going to be doing back squats if you have a barbell. If you do not have a barbell, you'll be doing dumbbell squats. Minute two, you'll be doing dips. If you have rings, you would be doing ring dips. And if not, you could do chair dips. Um, but the goal of those dips is also that they be weighted. Finally, in your third minute, you're going to get into rest. Who doesn't love rest? So you'll repeat that cycle for a total of seven rounds, right? In each of those movements or a total of 21 uh, minutes. For your warm up, you're going to do the same general warm up that we've been doing. So I'm going to go through it really quickly um, just as a refresh. So you would start with three minutes of some sort of active movement, whether that's a 400 meter run. 500 meter row, jumping rope for three minutes, all right? After that, you're going to go into your Spider-Man lunges, all right? So just a quick reminder, Spider-Man lunge is a nice long lunge forward. The front heel stays down, hands or elbows go to the ground, all right? And then you're coming right back up. You're gonna do eight on each side. After your Spider-Man lunges, you're gonna go into your lateral lunges. So nice wide feet here, right? Shift the weight down and back onto each side. I am not warmed up. This is very bad. All right, so you'll do 10 total though on each side, making sure that the foot that you're uh, lunging into, that heel stays down, right? You don't want the heel to come up. After you've completed your lateral lunges, we're gonna go into our inchworm with a push-up. So keep your feet wide, hinge forward for that hamstring stretch, walk your hands out, do five push-ups, either regular push-ups or on your knees. And then walk your hands back in, stand tall, and repeat the descending ladder of walking out for four, three, two, and one in those push-ups. After you've completed your inchworms, you're going to go into speed skaters, windmills, whatever you want to call them. Hip, hips are hinged back, core is tight. From here, our arms descend down, and we swing our arms, following our hands with our eyes. And you'll do a total of 10 on each Side. After that, you're going to go into your 10 arm circles, nice and big, forward for 10, and backwards for 10. Then you'll go into shoulder rolls, forward for 10, backwards for 10. Arm pretzels, so twisting one arm around, so you're wringing your arms like a towel, 10 on each side, okay? Finally, you'll finish with your wrist mobility, so I highly recommend just doing the wrist mobility where you're on your hands and your knees shifting back and forth right between your um hands and driving your shoulder over your fingers then fingers facing back sit back towards your heels pressing your palms into the ground and then finally getting the tops of the hands and again be careful here this is the one that you have to be most careful with and you would do about 30 seconds to a minute of wrist mobility there to get you ready for your squats today we're going to do um some squatting as well as um, just some glute bridges all right so we're gonna this is gonna get increasingly um, more difficult essentially so you're gonna start with five squat therapy reps so you're gonna find a fence a wall something that you can stand up against your feet mine are not exactly flat because of this but your feet should be shoulder width right I'm gonna actually step back here if I fall over this will be great hands go up right and from here you're gonna squat yourself down right as low as you can into that full squat and then drive up okay you're gonna do five of these all right make sure as you're squatting to you guys we all like to like let go of our hands and kind of do this right well that's easy but it also doesn't work your upper back so much as keeping the hands together and having to pull back as you descend down into that squat right so Really try to um, force that to get a good stretch in your upper back, okay? Especially if you're doing back squats today. After you've completed your squat therapy reps, you're going to do 30 seconds of glute, single leg glute bridges, all right? If you have a mobility band, one of those small ones that we used to use for monster walks, um, I really recommend putting it around your knees and then as you do your glute bridge, really driving out against that band. But for a single leg glute bridge, one leg is up, the other foot is planted, and you're going to lift, and you can either hold this or cycle through multiple glute bridges, right? And don't let your hips collapse, right, all the way down to the ground. You go down to right when your butt basically kisses the ground and drive right back up, all right? And again, with the band around the knees, it makes it a lot more evil. 
and better for you. All right, so you'll do a total of 30 seconds of that. After you've completed your glute bridges, you're gonna go into goblet squats, all right? So you're going to, um, if, you have, if you're doing back squats at this point, you would do um, some light weight, like a barbell, right? And practice your back squats. So for the rest of you, goblet squat. You're gonna hold um, dumbbell, kettlebell, whatever you have available into that front position, right? Keep it nice and close to the chest. Keep your elbows high here. And from here, you're gonna shift back into a squat. And we're gonna do five of these, five goblet squats. All right, shifting back, really looking forward. Don't look down, right? Once you've completed your five goblet squats, you're gonna go right back for another round of those single leg, uh, the single leg glute bridges. And you'll do another 30 seconds of those, okay? Once you've completed um, that last round of the glute uh, bridge raises, you're going to repeat that entire process of the squat therapy reps, right? The glute bridges and the goblet squats and one more round of that, all right? So you wanna make sure that you're sufficiently um, warmed up for squatting for today's workout. Once you guys um, have completed the squatting um, warm up, we're gonna go into prep for the workout itself. So we're gonna start with 10 air squats. So just making sure that you're practicing that good squat, right, mechanics. So your chest is up, your hips are going back, you're driving your knees out, right? You'll do 10 air squats. After that, you're going to find whatever you're doing dips on today. So if that's rings, um, you'll be using those. If you need to use a chair, table, whatever, box, um, you'll do a 10 second hold at the top of your dip, right? So working on staying here. And when you're, if you're using a chair, especially guys, this is a good time to practice where you should be in relation to your chair. A lot of times people want to be like way far forward of whatever they're doing their dips on. You don't want that, right? You want to be close. Then you'll do a 10 second hold at the bottom of your dip. All right. So notice that I'm leaning forward somewhat here. The same thing applies for your dips on the rings. If you're using rings today, you can also use a band obviously to help you and support you, but make sure when you're doing rings today, ring dips, that you lean forward, right? It's almost like um, a sloppy uh, push-up when we kind of get really uh, tired in our push-up when we start to snake our way out. I like to think of that almost with uh, my ring dips. I lean forward and then I lead with the shoulders coming out, okay? So make sure that you keep the um, rings nice and close to your sides when you're doing your dips and really lean forward towards your hands and then press out. Now, for your dip holds, on the rings, when you're, you're in that top support hold, you're trying to keep the rings close. And the same thing in that bottom support hold. Practice that leaning forward. You don't wanna be like this on the rings, right? I see this a lot. You wanna be like this in your down position on the rings. Your hand should be right next to your armpit, essentially, right? And the elbows are close, all right? It's like when you guys do dumbbell rows. All right, so you'll do 10 second hold there, then, after that, you're gonna go into either a back squat or you'll go into um, dumbbell squats. For your dumbbell squats, the dumbbells will start on your shoulders. And from here, you're gonna do five dumbbell squats, looking forward, keeping your core tight, elbows high, all right? For your back squats, you guys can choose to do um, a high or a low rack. Just make sure that you're fully engaged right, and hinging back with those hips and not allowing the chest to drop, still fight the chest high, okay? Once you've gotten through your five um, squats, you're going to do five dips, but with a slow lowering phase. All right, so for your lowering phase, right, one, two, three, four, five, and then up, okay? If you can't do five, Seconds on the lowering phase, uh, just do three. Also, those squats that I talked about, you should be doing those pretty slow, like a tempo, like a two, two, two. Okay, just to keep it, um, give you time to really warm up in those muscles, okay? Once you've completed the dips and the squats, you're gonna repeat this process for the squats, but now we're going down to three, um, three front, or three dumbbell or three back squats. And again, slow lowering phase, but adding a little bit more weight. And then for your dips, you'll do three dips at a regular pace, all right? And then you'll practice another set of three 
adding again more weight to your squat and three dips again okay and this time um if you're doing dips today the rx version is a weighted dip so if you are on your rings you're gonna have to have like a belt or something tied around you where you can hang a plate from now if you can't do a regular dip without weight then don't do a weighted dip right practice your actual dips and try to build up to being able to do it just your body weight the same things apply here if you struggle right with just doing dips on a chair then just stay there you can even bend your knees if you need to we want the reps to be challenging for you but not um not to the point where you're losing right like all of your form and technique right that, that's not the intent the intent is to strengthen but still have good movement for your workout today just as a reminder it's going to be a 21 minute emong all right so you're going to cycle through in one minute you'll be doing either 10 dumbbell squats or if you're doing back squats with a barbell today, you'll do five back squats. After that, you're gonna go into your second minute. It would be five dips. If you're doing ring dips or chair dips, the goal of this is that it, it is unbroken. So choose a variation that allows you to maintain that intent. Finally, your last minute in the cycle will be to rest for a minute. The rest, the intent of the rest is to allow you if you need to add more load in your back squats or decrease load in your back squats and front squats or double squats if you need to do that it allows you a little bit of time to do that but it is only a minute so please take that into consideration a minute goes really fast now if you're not having to unload or reload right this is your time to really maximize your rest stretch out get yourself ready for your next round so that you are maximizing your work when you get into that okay um other than that, keep the uh, dips unbroken. That's basically the only guidance that I have for you today. There's not a weight requirement for your back squats, just that you should be able to do all of the reps, but that they should be challenging, okay? So find that for yourself. For your cool down, um, we're gonna target your triceps, okay? And make sure that those are taken care of, but I highly recommend in between um, doing some stretching for your quads as well, and we'll go over that. So you're gonna do two rounds of 15 side plank dips. So side plank dip, your hand is flat on the ground, elbow is resting on the ground. You're going to lift your hips and then slowly lower them to the ground and then relift them. Now I'm not going all the way down to the ground, right? Right here and then driving right back up. Make sure you keep your hips tilted forward too, that you don't like collapse back right with them. So stay engaged in that side. You'll do 15 on one side and then 15 on the other side. After that, you're going to go into tricep extension. So you'll have a dumbbell. This is meant to be a cool down. So this should be a light weight. You're gonna do 50 of them. All right, so for your tricep extension, you put the dumbbell over your head, extend down, and then just drive up. Extend the weight down and drive up. All right, um, make sure you keep your core tight here and then you don't like lean back. So still think like when you're doing um, a shoulder press, how you have your ribs pulled down towards your hips, okay? Finally, I would recommend doing a standing quad stretch or a double quad stretch or a couch stretch. So standing quad stretch, just grabbing on to your foot, right? Standing nice and tall, sending your hips forward, getting a quad stretch there. Or you can do the seated version where you sit back on your heels and lean back. But you wanna take care of your quads after you've um, been doing all those squats, okay? Uh, if you have any other questions regarding the workout, let us know, but we hope that you enjoy it, and it's a strength day, so enjoy that. All right, take care, guys, and we hope to see you soon. Bye. Bye.